Hey there, welcome back to Wristwatch Revival Marshall here. And this is exciting. I got a watch cleaning machine and you can see it here. Uh, this is an ancient one. Uh, these probably made in the, I don't know, 40s, 50s, 30s, somewhere back then. This is an LNR Mastermatic. This is kind of the leveled up version from the regular one. And for this video, I'm gonna show you how it works and what I got and why I guess this thing makes me excited. So this is a watch cleaning machine. It's made to clean, systematically clean watches, movements, parts, etc. And this is something that you have to do all the time to service a watch movement. You have to clean it. That's the main thing that you're doing. The other main thing would be to lubricate it. And <clears throat> this is a machine that makes that so much easier. Currently, I'm using a uh, ultrasonic machine with like a three-step process that takes forever. This is much, much better. So here's the machine. And uh, the first thing though that actually ended up happening is I, I got the machine uh, in the mail and I got the jars that came with it, but they didn't have these stars. The, the, you can see the baffle at the bottom, it's just a piece of metal, but it didn't come with them. And since the basket ends up spinning inside of that jar, I'll show you that in a little bit, you need those, those you can see them on the left there, the, uh, the metal stars, the baffles that go on the bottom so that the fluid doesn't just turn into a big cyclone in there. And so <clears throat> I decided just to make these myself. And uh, I mean, it's just a piece of metal that's bent in a certain shape. It's nothing fancy. So I went to the hardware store and found something that I could actually cut off a strip of metal from after I bought it. It was like a piece of trim. And then I basically am just eyeballing it. I, I'm just like, well, I don't know. Let's just see if I can make this work. So I looked at the picture that I had um, up on the screen there in front of me and decided, okay, well, I got to count how many things there are here. And I decided just to start to get going on it. And I bought these clippers so I could cut the metal. And this looks pretty good. As you can see, I've got kind of the basic shape of, of what those are. And so now it's time to give it a test fit and see if it fits in the in the jar and it doesn't at all. Uh, <laughs> this one was just way too big. I couldn't even get it to lay flat inside the jar at all. And so right then I knew, okay, this is just too long. So I need to, I need to shorten this. So I'm gonna cut off the tips like that and like that. And we'll give it another test fit and, well, I got it to go in there, but it didn't spread out into the star shape it's supposed to be. So I decided, okay, okay, this is just too big. I'm gonna make these folds smaller. And of course that means that the whole thing is gonna end up being smaller. And then maybe I can actually fit it into the bottom where the little, the sort of star shape would unfold down there and then do its job of, of keeping the solution. Cause what's gonna ultimately be in that jar is a cleaning or rinsing solution, depending on the jar that comes with actually three of them. And again, I'm gonna show you how the machine works in, in just a minute. But first I wanted to get these baffles done and there we go. We have a baffle and it looks fine and it'll do its job. And so I just need to make three of those, which I did. And now this is the basket that you put the parts of the watch in. I already have a watch that was taken apart. And so I'm gonna use it as my first uh, guinea pig here. And as you can see, there's a deeper part of the basket for the bigger parts. And then the dimpled part on the top is where you put the little fine parts. Uh, and then the mesh lets the, the cleaning fluid get in there. So let's just get all the parts in here. As you can see, I'm gonna start putting some of the bigger ones on the bottom and this is it. Basically every single part of the broken apart watch goes in outside of a few select pieces. Um, the dial doesn't go in for example and a few others. That's the main spring and I think if I'm careful I can get it to sit in there and just put this lid on. That seems fine with me and it's a good way to get that main spring super super clean. And now it's time for the little fine parts, the gears and the train of wheels and all that kind of stuff needs to go in. So off we go, fill up these. I don't really know how to do it, so I'm just sort of doing it randomly, <clears throat> putting uh, you know, parts so that it doesn't feel like there's too many flat parts laying on top of each other, basically. And with that, I can now put the lid on. The lid goes uh, down a certain way and then has this little notch there to make sure that it stays flush because this is going to be spinning. So now, this is the machine itself with the jars and I've got the baffles in there already. So the first one takes a cleaning solution. So you fill it up to the logo on the thing and then it's got these kind of cool old school lids. Um, I'm actually looking into something that would sit a little, they just sit on top of it and I'm afraid some of this stuff is gonna evaporate out. But at any rate, then the other two jars take rinsing solution. So this isn't actually like an active cleaner, it's a rinse and the, the other two jars take that. So this one and then the one behind it. And we're gonna do a four-step process for this. And by the way, yes, I'm very proud of these baffles I made. And 
what's going to happen is the first one is going to be the cleaner, then the rinse, then another rinse. And then that tall post uh, there on the left-hand side is actually a heater to dry the part. So first the basket just gets secured to the top of that post where the motor is. Then you plunge it down in and there's a kind of a seal of rubber around the top there. And then you turn on this little light and that's actually just to get the heater going, that, that post next to my hand on the left there. And then you turn this thing on and all it does is spin. Now the Mastermatic, the one that I got, actually has a built-in motor that can go both directions. And as you can see, it's spinning one and then spinning the other. And that, that helps agitate the parts more and get that cleaning fluid uh, really in there to get it perfectly clean. And this is, as I mentioned, the cleaning fluid section of it. So after I do that for a certain amount of time, it actually says in the manual, you only need to do it for like three minutes or so. So I did it for like five. Then you lift it up, but it's very wet, right? There's a whole bunch of liquid in there. So what you do is just give it a quick spin and you can turn up the motor pretty high here and get that spin in there. And then that'll, um, that'll get the most of the moisture just sort of off of it so it's not dripping or, or having anything like that. Then it's time to move it to the first rinse, put it in the back, tighten it down. And once again, it's gonna be a few minutes in there. That one's already done. And that leaves us just the final rinse here. So one more to go, and I put this into the final rinse solution and then run it for its final uh, spin. And again, this one will go back and forth once it gets rolling. There you go, back, back, back. And uh, that'll give it its final rinse. Once that's done, once again, I'm gonna give it a quick spin just to get the majority of the cleaning fluid off. You don't want it dripping all over the place. I mean, these are you know somewhat harsh chemicals. And then this post here is the one I was talking about. This is a heater. So at the bottom of this is a heated electrical element. And then all you do is just turn it up and it spins in there for a while. That, get, that kind of wicks away all of the moisture in conjunction with the heat. It should be dry and it, it can get a little hot. So I'm trying to be careful here, but it's actually not too bad. And there we go. The parts are cleaned and finished. Now we can get a look at how they actually did once we get back on the bench here and make sure nothing got shifted around too much or flew off. That's kind of the, the worry, isn't it? But it looks like everything's still sitting nicely in its little tray. And I can just put everything back in the tray that I keep it in um, with the dust cover over it so that when I go to uh, put the watch back together, and in fact, this is one that I'm still in the middle of a video for, um, then I will be able to find all the parts and put the watch back together. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Here's the stuff on the bottom. Everything looks good and clean. And this is, uh, this is what the watch cleaning machine does. Very simple device, but really handy. I mean, so much faster and easier than the way I was doing it before. And look at that. We've got fully clean parts all ready to go, all finished up, and uh, everything looks good. Few last things that I need to do because I don't wanna put, there's certain parts that I don't like to put in there based on the recommendations that I've gotten online. Uh, particularly the balance, you can see it's still actually attached to the main plate there. And that's, I think, the better way to do it from what I've been told, uh, so that the spring, the spring doesn't get too out of whack. So that's it. That is the watch cleaning machine. It's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a big step for an amateur, you know, to have one of those, but you can get the pretty good deal on them on eBay and stuff, particularly if you know how to uh, fix electronics, because they do stop working at some point. And, uh, yeah, anyway, that's it. That's gonna do it for this one. Uh, make sure to uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to get notified whenever I put up a video and I appreciate you taking the time to hang out. We'll see you next time.